As a pastor, I hear a lot of sad stories. Teenagers have told me about things that they've stolen, about their addictions to pornography, about the embarrassing things they've done when they've gotten drunk on the weekend, or even about going to church or youth group high on drugs. I know a number of boys who've got their girlfriends pregnant and a few girls who've had abortions. These are not things they're proud of, and some end up thinking that God must hate them for the mistakes that they've made. What about you? What things have you done that you're not proud of? Things that you'd be embarrassed if people knew more about? Do you still carry around with you any sense of shame or guilt for the things you've done in the past? Have you ever thought that there was no way that God could still love or forgive you for the mistakes that you've made? Is there a such thing as unforgivable sin? Things that God can't or just won't forgive? Do you think that there comes a time when God has just about had enough of you because you've messed up and disobeyed him too many times? Let's look at what the Bible has to say about this. 1 Timothy 1.15 says, Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, and I am the worst of them all. Paul, who wrote this, calls himself the worst sinner. Why? Because before he knew Jesus, he would hunt down Christians, have them arrested, and sometimes killed for their faith. He goes on to say, But God had mercy on me so that Christ Jesus could use me as a prime example of his great patience with even the worst sinners. Then others will realize that they too can believe in him and receive eternal life. Paul is saying that if God can forgive him, a murderer of Christians, then God can forgive anybody. God can even forgive you for the worst sins you've done. God has unlimited patience for you because his love is unconditional. Therefore, there's no unforgivable sin because of God's unconditional love. Nowhere does God say that in order for him to love you, that you have to be a perfect or even close to perfect person. He loves you just the way you are and even when you make mistakes. There's nothing that you can do to make God love you any less. So let me give you three reasons why you don't have to carry these feelings of guilt and shame around anymore. First, it's because Jesus took it all. Hebrews 10.10 10 says, For God's will was for us to be made holy by the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once for all time. Jesus sacrificed his body to take away the guilt and shame for your sins. God now considers you holy. And that's our next point. God doesn't see you as guilty. 1 John 3.20 says, Even if we feel guilty, God is greater than our feelings, and he knows everything. God knows if you really feel sorry for your sin, he will forgive you if you just ask him to. So the more you see yourself through God's eyes, the less guilt and shame you will feel. Finally, you can be free from your guilt and shame because you have a hope and a future. Jeremiah 29.11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. God's got big plans for you. He doesn't want you moping around in guilt and feeling bad about yourself. Instead, he wants you to see yourself as he sees you, free from guilt and shame, so that he can use you to go out and share this same good news with others. Hebrews 10.22 says, Let us go right into the presence of God with sincere hearts, fully trusting him. For our guilty consciences have been sprinkled with Christ's blood to make us clean, and our bodies have been washed with pure water. Now pause this video, answer the following questions.